Now, let us take a simple example. Uh, and then we'll see based upon this example how we can model this example as a reinforcement learning problem. And then we'll find certain solutions upon how to solve these particular problems. So in this example, uh, we have an agent which can move in this four cross three environment. So this is the environment which is mentioned over here. So in this environment, the objective is that I need to reach to the goal states. So there are two states reaching which the game would be terminated is either this plus one or minus one. Now, in this case, the possible actions that an agent can take is either it can move up or down or left or right. They are looking at the states. You might be getting an idea that plus one is giving me a better value, minus one, you are taking something away from me. So the desirable state would be in this case is this plus one. So I would wish to reach to this particular location. Now we are at the starting position. Our objective is to reach to this plus one state. Even I can reach to minus one state, but I don't think that is a suitable option that I would be looking for. So I'm interested in knowing the paths. What paths should I take? Like if we are dealing with a deterministic environment, the answer is pretty easy. So we are having two options which are there that is shown on the screen. Right? The first would be, I am at the starting point, I can take an action, move up. I will be in this particular location. Again, I can take an action, move up. You are in this particular location. And you move right, right, right. You will reach to the goal state that was desired in your case. Now, the other option could be that I should move right so that I am in this particular block and then again I can move right and accordingly the idea is that I should be reaching to that plus one slot. So I can move right, right, up, up, right to reach to the desired position. Okay. Fine. Now, so here the environment was little deterministic, so it was not that difficult. But what if we are dealing with a stochastic environment or some probabilistic environment? Let's say every action that we are taking, now it has a probability associated with it. Let's see this after. Like specifically for this particular example, there is a correct action or a suitable action. Okay? We do not know what. So for every state, there is a suitable action. If I am moving in the desired direction of the suitable action. Like, let's assume that for this particular state, S1, moving up is the correct action. So in this case, moving up was the correct action. So I, I'm having four options. I can move either left or right or up or down. So if I am moving up, so I will be moving with the probability point. If I'm moving left to the desired, like this was the desired action, moving up is the desired action corresponding to this particular state. And if I am moving left of the desired, 
then the probability of taking that action would be 0.1. If I'm moving right to the desire, then it is 0.1. And obviously, the fourth action will give me the probability is 0. That is not to be taken. So, taking these actions will be landing to different states. If there was a wall on one of them sides, then I would be simply bumping with the wall and reaching back to where we started. Let's say this left side, there was a wall. That means I cannot cross over the wall and reach to the other the room. So in this case, what will happen is if you bump with the wall, you will come back to the same room. Like in this case, state is one. Now, now let's try to see what would be the uh, probability that I would have generated by executing the sequence up, up, right, right, left. Okay. So this is the correct sequence which I am supposed to generate. Let's assume that. That means on the state S1, I should take up movement. On state S2, I should take up movement. On state S3, I should take the right movement. On state S4, again right movement. S5, again right movement. So this is the desired action, desired path of actions that one should take. Like in this case, all the actions that we have taken are same as the desired. So in the previous slide, we have seen the probability will be 0.8. So it is 0.8 and that too on five different occasions. So this is how the probability would be generated. Let's assume for time being that instead of picking this particular action, we moved along another path. Let's assume this was the path that we moved along. Let's assume this was not the correct path. So in this case, if you see, all the actions are mismatching because this, this is not the correct action that you might have generated. Only this particular action matches with the correct action. If you see. Now, you can see only in this case, in this scenario, the probability here is picked to be pointed for the other one, it is pointing my direction. But this is also another path to reach to the goal. We cannot ignore this path. So the sum of these two will give you the total probability to reach to the desired goal. Okay. Now comes the making up of this particular reinforcement problem. How should I model a given problem? So in order to model a given problem, a reinforcement learning problem, we use Markov decision process. Now, so the Markov decision process has four components, S, A, P, e, and R. S is the set of states. All states which are there available in your search space will be part of this. And there will be an initial state to start with. So we are calling it S1. A is the set of actions. All possible actions that you can think of taking over states. That means action is applicable over a state. You will be on a state, you will be applying an action. What is the outcome of applying an action? I will be moving to some other state. Or I may be on the same state itself as a self loop. P. P is the transition model. Like what is the probability that you were previously on S, you have taken an action A over that state, and now you are on state S dash. So we can take 
a Marco assumption that it will only depend upon the uh, just the current state and not all the previous other states that you might have came from by taking three different actions. So probability corresponding to the current state, the new state that you would be on will only be computed in terms of the previous state and not their previous. So we are using the concept of first order uh, Markov chain. Uh, R is the reward function corresponding to every state. Like what is the benefit I would be getting if I would be on a given state? Maybe a positive one, it may be a negative one. The problem we know when we solve the problem, the solution to this particular problem will become a policy. So, what is a policy? Policy is what is the correct action an agent should take on any state. If I'm on state S, what is the correct action one should take? This is known as policy. So policy would be corresponding to all the states in the environment which are 